Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the location plugin. And a good way to start a video about the location plugin is to talk about what Fog 1.3.0 can do without the location plugin. So uh, this here, this is my home Fog setup. It has two storage nodes, one of which is a master storage node. They're both in the same storage group. If we look in storage management, you can see that one is named headquarters and the other one is named remote branch. And these are just uh, names I've given them, but to be honest, they're just they're two towers sitting next to each other on the same switch in my house. Uh, but they're in the same storage group and uh, they're both enabled and headquarters is set as master. <clears throat> now what can fog do as it is right now with this setup without the location plugin well I'll tell you uh, any images and snap-ins that are on the headquarters storage node will be replicated to the remote branch server and uh, this happens automatically and you can set the frequency of this replication now if I added a third storage node in the default storage group, Fog will go ahead and replicate everything in the headquarters master node to that third storage node. Or if I had a different storage node here that wasn't in the default storage group, Fog would not replicate to that node because it's not in the same group. Um, for replication to happen, you need to have a master node set in the group that you want replicated and you can only have one master node and all uploads which means all image captures always go to the master node of the storage group that you have the image assigned to just a few rules um, now uh, how does a client determine what server to get its image from when you're trying to image a client, when you're trying to image a host, as uh, we like to call them in Fog, because we have the Fog client down here, and uh, hosts and clients get mixed up pretty easily, so we like to call computers hosts, and we refer to the client as the piece of software. But anyways, how does a host determine what image I mean what server to use uh, well the client boots up and uh, it makes a request to uh, the server for some instructions and the those instructions are are generated by the server usually the main server uh, generates them and the main server will pick either one or the other of these <clears throat> and that can be if neither of them are being used and both have full open slots then the client might use either one of these but say headquarters here which I've uh, limited to two for the maximum clients say it's imaging two clients right now and it is maxed out well then the client should use the remote branch server and go ahead and image from that because the headquarters server the headquarters storage node is busy at the moment. Um, now this is, this setup would be fine if headquarters has a one gigabit per second uh, link to the remote branch site or say headquarters is on floor three and remote branch is on floor four and there's gigabit or four gigabit or ten gigabit between those two networks. There will be no slowdown and a client on the headquarters floor imaging from the remote branch floor it's not a big issue because the bandwidth is there. However, what if headquarters is in New York and remote branch is in Japan, a world apart from each other? So if a host in Japan were to try to be imaged if you tried to image a host in Japan and the remote branch was fully busy at the moment 
then it's possible that that client could try to image from headquarters in New York. And that might present a major problem if your WAN link only has so much throughput available. Say it's a 10 megabit per second WAN link or maybe a 40 or 50 or even a 100 meg. That's, that's still pretty slow for imaging purposes. Um, would it get done? Sure. It'll just take a really long time and probably what's more important than taking long is it ties up your link and you don't want to tie up the link because other things have to happen on that link. So how do you solve this? How do you make sure that computers and hosts, that hosts in Japan use the server in Japan and not the server in New York? Well that's where the location plugin comes in. The location plugin will allow you to set a location for a storage node. You can have many storage nodes in one location or one in one location and you can have many locations. Uh, and you can make locations uh, named like Japan, New York, Dallas, uh, Hong Kong, uh, wh whatever name you choose. It doesn't matter. And then you can assign those same locations to hosts. In this uh, particular setup, I have two hosts. This one here, this living room, is the computer I'm using right now. And when we click on it, you'll see that I can't assign a location right now. Well, that field will appear when we install the location plugin. Now let's go over installing the location plugin. We'll go and click on uh, Fog Configuration. And to install the location plugin, what we have to do is uh, we have to enable Fog's plugin system. So we'll go to Fog Settings over here, and at the bottom we'll see Plugin System. We'll click that, and there's this setting here Fog Plugin Sys Enabled. We'll enable that and click Save Changes. Settings successfully stored and now you'll see that we have an extra icon on the uh, fog ribbon and it's called plugin management. We will uh, we'll go ahead and click that. Now here are all of the current plugins available. Uh, these will probably these will probably uh, all be available in 1.3.0. A uh, few have been added here recently, um, <clears throat> but the one we're concerned with is this one here, the location plugin. And there's a short little description here that kind of describes it. Uh, what we'll do to install this, because right now it's not installed, what we'll do to install it is click on it. And what that does is that adds it to the list to be installed. It's like a two-phase installation. So now it's not in this list anymore. Now we have to activate this plugin. So if we go to installed plugins, we see we have nothing here. But if we go to install plugins, we now have the location plugin. We'll click it and then click install plugin. And now it's installed. You'll see that under installed plugins, we have the location plugin. And on the fog ribbon, we have a new icon called Location Management. We can go ahead and click that. Here in Location Management, we don't have any settings right now. If we click List All Locations, we have no locations right now. So let's go ahead and create a new location. We click Create New Location over here, and we'll give the location a name, and let's say New York for the name. Now we get to pick the storage group here that this setting uh, that this location name belongs to. I'm going to pick default and now we get to pick the storage node that is in this location and I'm going to put headquarters as the New York location. And this here, this checkbox, uh, use init and kernels from this node, it's optional. Now the reason why this is optional is this storage node, this headquarters storage node, it, uh, it, it might not be a uh, full-blown web server like what we have here. It might be a NAS network attached storage. It might be uh, some other, it uh, might be a Windows server 
serving images via NFS. Um, it could be, for whatever reason, we may not want to serve kernels and init's from this particular server. But in this case, I do. This is a full-blown server, uh, Fog server headquarters is. So I want to serve init's and kernels from it. And I'll click Add. Now the location is edit, edited. And we have a new option here, My Kernels and Init's. We'll go ahead and check that too. And click Update. All right, now we're going to add another location, and we're going to call this one Japan. And the storage group is the default storage group, and the storage node I'm going to pick Remote Branch. And for this particular setup, this server is a full-blown storage node, which I've used the Fog installer to install and it is able to serve kernels and init's. Now if I didn't check this, all computers that are trying to image at the Japan location, well when they network boot they're going to try to get the kernel and the init's from the main server if I don't check this. Okay. And uh, that can be taxing on your WAN link if you're doing a lot of imaging and the init's they're not small. They're not, they're not really small. Uh, so this particular server, I want to serve kernels and init's. But if it was a NAS, I would not, to put it simple like that. Or if it was a Windows server, I would not. But for this particular instance, I do. Now click Add, My Kernels and Init's. I'll go ahead and check that. Uh, this is a new setting. I'm not quite sure what this does. But it's uh, for the purposes of this video it's probably okay to uh, not worry about it too much so now we have locations list all locations we have two locations we've got Japan and we've got New York kernels and init's from location yes and yes storage nodes this is the remote branch this is the headquarters they're both in the same storage group default so now under host management I can set locations on hosts if I go to living room here, you'll see that I have a location drop down box. And if I click that, I have Japan and New York. Now, if I pick Japan, that means every time this computer images, it will always use this location only and storage nodes in this location only. And because I have, I'm serving kernels and init's as well for this location, it will also get the kernels and init's from this location only. If I were to pick New York, then it would use the New York storage node, which happens to be this server here. And it happens to also be the master storage node. I'll click update and that's it. That's all there is to it. Now this host, the living room here, is locked in to uh, the New York location, which is the main storage node. And if I wanted to use Japan, I could. And now I'm I'm using the uh, the other storage node that I have here. Now this is uh, how you save your WAN link. Basically, this is how you do it. Uh, and that's that's all there is to it. I think that you can. Uh, I think you can probably set locations uh, maybe in the uh, the uh, fog boot menu I'm not sure if that's been implemented yet or not uh, but I, I think you can I'm not sure um I'll have to double check on that but anyways that's uh, that's all there is to it it's pretty simple I guess we can go over uninstalling the location plugin now to uninstall it you don't have to worry about any of the uh, locations you've created you just go to plugin management and you go to installed plugins over here and you click remove and now it's removed the location plugin has been taken out and that's all there is to it uh, pretty simple hope you've got something out of this video hope you understand the location plugin a little better what it does and how it can uh, enable you to span the globe 
with fog with your organization and be able to do that successfully over slow links. And that will be all. Thanks for watching.